<clears throat> for the reason that we're all here uh, to listen and learn from Dr. Marta Rendon. Dr. Rendon is the founder and medical director of the Dermatology and Aesthetic Center in Boca Raton, which focuses on general dermatology, cosmetic dermatology, Mohs procedure, and clinical research. Dr. Rendon is board certified in both dermatology and internal medicine. She is the former chief of dermatology at Cleveland Clinic. She was voted professor of the year at the University of Miami. She is the past president and founder of the American Society of Cosmetic Dermatology and Aesthetic Surgeons. She is a physician teacher. She teaches other physicians on the latest cosmetic dermatology procedures. She is now a global celebrity dermatologist for Procter & Gamble's Head & Shoulders Hair Care Line, which is no surprise to us since she has been an icon and a favored physician in Boca Raton for as long as I have lived here. It's with pride and pleasure that I introduce our friend, Dr. Marta Rendon. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to learn some issues that we have with what's going on in the world today and the sun and skin and cancer. And uh, it's to the point where dermatologists are concerned and the American Academy of Dermatology has done a tremendous effort to teach about sun protection because we think skin cancer is becoming almost an epidemic in the United States. So we're going to touch a little bit on the different types of skin cancer. We're going to look at uh, sun protection, look at sunscreens that are available. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about what's going on with the tanning booth industry. And we're also going to talk about the new sunscreen ingredients and a little bit at the end on skin care and what do you need to look for when you go and buy skin care products. Now, why is this topic important and why are we out there trying to teach you and your children and for you to teach your parents and grandparents and everybody about uh, skin cancer? Because one in five Americans develops skin cancer and every four hours an American dies of either a basal cell carcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma. And every hour an American dies of melanoma. When you think about it, that's pretty significant. Now, what are the types of skin cancer? It's kind of simple. So I think today, after you walk out of here, within an hour, you'll be able to know at least what's abnormal and when you need to go and see your doctor. And also that way, because skin cancer is preventable and it's curable. There's three types of skin cancer, melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, and squamous cell carcinoma. The melanoma, obviously, is the one you hear about because it's the most malignant, and it's the one that kills people if you don't catch it early. The other ones, we're going to show you what they look like, and if those, if you just burn them or cut them or treat them topically, you're able to get rid of them. Now, skin cancer risk factors. Who's at risk for developing skin cancer? Well, first of all, the light person, that freckly, very white, redhead. We always have one in the audience as an example, so it's always, it's always good to talk about this because we say, okay. So those are people that are very light complected, have a higher risk of developing skin cancer. If you have a family history of skin cancer, you will be at a higher risk of developing skin cancer as well. People that live in, sun ex in, in areas where there's a lot of sun, we're in Florida, we can't hide from the sun the whole year through. If you have a lot of years of sun exposure, if you had, had blistering sunburns where you were little, all these things increase your risk of skin cancer, so you need to pay attention. And all, another thing is you have multiple moles. If you have, we, there's something called dysplastic neva syndrome, and these are people that are loaded with a lot of moles. Uh, they have a higher risk of developing skin cancer as well. Now, let's talk about photoprotection in skin cancer. Does sunlight contribute to melanoma risk? Because there's been a lot of controversy about use of sunscreen and vitamin D, and are we becoming vitamin D deficient because we're using too much sunscreen? So we go to the other extreme. Does sunlight really cause melanoma. And if you look at the statistics, look at what's happened over the years. In uh, the percent per 1,500 of the U.S. population, so six out of 1,500 in the 80s would have melanoma. Now it's almost 20 to 25. Out of every 1,500 people, 
they will have um, in the United States melanoma, the risk of developing melanoma. I think people don't know this. It is the fifth leading cause of death in men, and it is the sixth leading cause in women, obviously secondary to breast, lung, colon, and bladder. So those are important issues. Melanoma is less common, almost 100,000 cases per year, but it's more aggressive, like we already said, and about 8,000 deaths uh, every year. We know this person, and he's had a melanoma, and I think when we, a lot of the media, a lot of the celebrity, a lot of the politicians, when they have skin cancers, this is a way of, of reaching the community and telling them, these people have it, pay attention. We, it, it, it makes it a, a more conscious effort of all of us acknowledging that it's everywhere. It's something that can happen to any of us. This you see a lot, and it's simple. We call it the ABCDs, and what is uh, any mole, you look at the mole and you see if it's symmetrical, if it's round, if it's, the borders are regular, if the color is even, and if the diameter is small. So anything on the other side, asymmetry on even edges, two more shades, less than, that's a funky, I call them abnormal looking moles. So that's what you have to learn. You have to learn to recognize your moles. You have to learn to check your children's moles. And you have to be aware. I've been in line sometime in the supermarket where I see somebody and I, you know, I go up to him. I said, I'm sorry, you know, I'm a dermatologist. You have a lesion that you should probably get checked because it might be a little skin cancer. I mean, it's kind of difficult to do those things, but it's like I can't help myself. It's, it's, I walk around, they call me eagle eye. My patients call me eagle eye. I mean, and you guys, after today, you'll become that. You know, you can't help it. You start looking at things, and you're like, oh, my God, that looks abnormal. That, that's really black, or it's got irregular borders. It, it, and, and you'll be able to, to contribute to people uh, by knowing this. If it's big, if it's asymmetrical, if it's uneven, if the borders are irregular, or if it's really large. Let me show you pictures. If we were to break this mole in half,